I need to show you guys. This is literally what my dog's doing right now. I'm filming this on my phone just so you guys can see this. Like, can you be a little happy we're filming a holiday video? No. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny. I of course am Danny and today, as you can see, is a special holiday episode. <laughs> I busted out my favorite holiday sweater for y'all and uh, I'm feeling pretty excited about it. Feeling pretty festive. I mean, uh, I got some nice candles going. I got my Christmas tree, which is basically there year round. So I'm very excited to bring you three fun, easy, simple, crafty projects that you can give as gifts over the holidays or literally for any occasion, which is kind of like nice about this. I wanted, I know like it's the holidays right now, but I also think it's important that whatever I show you guys how to make, that it also could cater to egg any time of the year, depending on when you watch this. So. I think that these three gifts are going to be super awesome, super useful, and they're super easy. So without further ado, let's jump in. Roll the tape. So I got the inspiration for these coasters from a wonderful online creator called Jen Woodhouse. Um, I'll link her website down below, but I saw her do these and I was like, oh my God, I have to try this and then I have to share it with you guys because it's just so cool. So to start off my DIY coasters, I went and sourced a white oven baked clay from my local craft store and I'm just cutting an inch off of the end and I'm rolling it in my hands to kind of like warm up that clay because it become it's a little hard to work with at the beginning so you really have to kind of like warm it up and then I'm taking a rolling pin if you don't have a rolling pin at home sometimes I use a dowel or you can just use something that's kind of round like a glass or an old wine bottle that you have just anything that you can use to kind of just flatten it out leaving like about one quarter inch thickness I'm doing this three more times so that I have a beautiful set of four coasters because you don't want to give someone one coaster. I mean, like, what do you do with one coaster? You're like, thanks. <laughs> I'm kidding. So once that is all done, I'm putting all four of those pieces onto a baking tray and I'm placing it in the oven at 250 degrees for 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes, it's like nothing. So once the 15 minutes were up, I just took those out and let them cool. Once they were dry, I basically just took my desired colors, really like blue aqua color, so that was kind of my inspiration. Um, so I made sure I had a white, I went with a dark blue, there was a teal in there. Of course, you can just mix a whole bunch of colors. These were just acrylic paints, and starting from the outside, working my way in, I always started with a dark blue and then kind of worked my way in with a lighter color. Adding a little bit of water each time, I kind of wanted to give it a more fluid look. There was no wrong way to do this. You just kind of keep layering colors until you're happy with it. And then I wanted to give it a little bit of pizzazz, so I brought in a pink and then just added like little pink lines every once in a while. I don't know, I just thought it kind of gave it like a little, like a pop, like a little pop. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, at this point, creativity is yours. You can have fun with it. So I'm just moving some paint around, blending it in, going back on top till I had patterns that I really liked. So once you're all done and you're happy with the look, you just need to let that dry. So normally when I gold leaf, it comes in that like really light tissue form, um, but I found a product that's like a gold leaf paste. I will link the product that I use down below. It is oil based, so it has a bit of a smell to it, but it was super cool and it wasn't that expensive. I think I spent $12.99 on it, but I used so little and it was thick. It only needed one layer. 
You can also use Liquid Leaf, but I couldn't source any in Canada quick enough, so this product definitely did the trick. And honestly, I had a lot of success. It was really easy to use. And because it was thick, I was really able to get into the crevasses of the coasters. So I let that dry overnight because it is oil-based. It takes a little bit longer to dry. The next day, I was able to take a satin varnish glaze and I just dropped a little bit on each coaster and then covered the whole thing. This is just gonna make it nice and protected and uh, yeah, just basically makes it nice and protected. <laughs> And then when they were all done, I simply just used little vinyl bumpers. You can buy these in any hardware store, craft store, dollar store. And I'm just using those on the bottom. I like because then they don't slide around. And that's it. How cute are these? I also found a cute wood box at the dollar store and I stained it a dark brown, added some nice decorative lights to give it a bit of something something and voila! Adorable DIY agate coasters. They look so beautiful and it's even more special because he made it. Also, all the cost and time evaluations are listed below. The biggest thing that you need for this project is one of those painting drop sheets. So the first thing I'm doing is I laid out a drop sheet and I measured out 20 by 30 using a measuring tape. I don't actually have a fabric measuring tape. I only have a regular measuring tape. So of course I'm just gonna use that. Use whatever you want, use your feet, use your hands. I don't care. Just make sure you have the measurements that you like. I went with measurements of a 20 by 30 mat, but I also am providing an extra one and a half inches around around that 20 by 30. So realistically, I'm actually measuring out 21 and a half by 31 and a half. You just wanna make sure that you're giving yourself a little bit of an extra lip. Next, I'm cutting my pattern out using scissors. If you have fabric scissors at home, totally use those. If you don't, just use regular scissors. It's a drop sheet, who cares? I couldn't find my fabric scissors anywhere because I'm so disorganized right now. So I'm just using regular scissors. So sue me. So, sue me. Ah! Oh, oh, that's a good one. Good one, pop pop. That's a good one, pop. Next, I'm taking a bonding tape. So essentially, this is built for fabric so that you can bond two pieces of fabric together and then you basically use your iron to like iron it into eternity. No, like you basically iron it and then it sticks the two sides together. It's pretty cool. And I'm running that along the edge and I'm heating it up and then I'm running my iron over top of that. So once it's nice and hot and it's stuck to the one side, you basically just lift up the film off of it and I'm flipping it over and then attaching it to the second side of the fabric. And then I'm using my iron. I'm using an iron in this video, but if you don't have an iron at home, you can actually go and source fabric glue that you can either put into your heat gun or there's like a four to eight hour dry fabric glue, which will make this project a lot longer, but it is an alternative if you don't want to spend 20 bucks and buy an iron. Just saying. And you want to repeat this for all four sides. And it's okay if you double up on some of the corners. Don't worry about that, it's not a big deal. And don't worry about the ugly frayed edges. We're going to be covering this later, so no problem. Now you can turn it over and you basically have the top of your mat ready to go. So it's time for my favorite part, which is to make the magic happen on your mat. To make my mat, I'm using a stencil and fabric paint. So I'm just prepping my stencil. It actually has a sticky adhesive on the back, which is kind of cool. So when you place it down, make sure that your edges aren't gonna move or it's not gonna actually like seep underneath. And I'm taking a sponge. Normally, I would be using a little dabber. You can get these at craft stores. I couldn't find, I thought I owned them and I couldn't find them anywhere because I'm so disorganized right now. 
Um, so I just ended up having a regular sponge, which is fine. Just, you don't wanna fill up the sponge with a lot of paint. You wanna kind of like dry dab it first, and then you wanna start basically going in a dabbing motion onto your fabric. So a lot of creative liberty here. Where you choose to put your stencil is totally up to you. I started creating a pattern all over the top of my mat. I did yellow for the lemons and then I did a nice green for the little leaves. And I mean like, I think it turned out pretty darn cute. I like the lemons. I don't know what it is about lemons. It just makes me really happy. The next day, I so I ended up sourcing something called Comfort Grip. It's basically like that little spongy stuff that you, people put under carpets or under mats in the bathroom so that um, you don't slip around. I got this at the dollar store. It was like $3. It was so cheap. I love that. And I cut it out to the size of my mat. Now you can totally just stop there. Because I was giving it as a gift, I kind of just wanted it to feel more like it's all one thing. So to help make it more giftable, I ended up using a double-sided carpet tape for this because it is really good at attaching to fabrics. And I felt like, you know, you could use masking tape, but first of all, it doesn't look that great. Second of all, this carpet tape isn't invasive. Like you can pull it off eventually and it doesn't ruin the carpet in any way. I was looking for something like that. And eventually if you want to wash it, all of that is super non-permanent. So you can just pull it off, wash it, and that's it. And you can just use the grip pad or you can reuse the tape. It's pretty easy. And as a little extra gift, I ended up adding two little wood utensils and rolled it inside the mat and then tied everything off with a nice piece of twine. I am just obsessed with this mat. It looked, honestly, I don't know if the camera's showing you right, but it looks so good in real life. Like, I think everyone should do this project. It's a lot of fun and it's super easy. And just to show you how well that comfort grip works, I tested it out and as you can see, my amazing dance skills, this mat is going nowhere. And the best part is it makes the mat super comfortable. It is so adorable and I love that you can truly customize it to look however you want. You can add words, fun images, you can go more abstract. It's just a sweet personalized gift to give a friend any time of the year. I cleaned my bottle ahead of time. I'm just making sure I'm removing any glue residue or anything that I don't want to be seen on the bottle later. I was gifting this bottle of wine to one of my girlfriends who loves that terrazzo look. So I actually ended up finding a stencil that has the terrazzo, um, I don't know why I have to say it like that, terrazzo. It's like so, so fancy. So I'm just taking the stencil, I'm pulling off the adhesive back, I laid it across the bottle, made sure all of the edges are down and nice and tight to the bottle. I also ended up just taping off the tops and the sides um, just to make sure it was nice and tight because you don't want anything falling in behind or it's going to ruin your bottle and you'll have to restart and then you'll have to drink that bottle of wine and then restart on a new bottle of wine. It can get messy, folks. Get really messy. Next, you want to take something called an etching cream and apply it liberally onto the stencil. Now this stuff looks kind of gross. It's like dark brown. It kind of looks like molasses for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Some etching creams look different, but this one in particular looks like molasses. I'm, I'm being very liberal with it. Like I'm, I'm applying this very thick. I just want to make sure that all of the edges are completely covered. And then all you want to do is just let that sit for 15 minutes. And then under the tap, I'm just washing away the cream and then watch what's left over. How cool is that? You have this like entire custom etching left on the bottle. And like, let me tell you guys, that etching is permanent. I like tried scraping it with my finger. I could not get it off. It turned out so well. How cool is that, right? You can do anything. It's like totally personalized. And you didn't have to go out and buy one of those crickets to do it. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on to the customized bag that's going with our wine bottle. I ended up sourcing these cool little jute wine bags online. If you'd like these ones, I've linked them down below. 
first time placing a piece of paper towel on the inside because the fabric paint does a tend to go through the jute and I don't want it seeping into the other side of my bag so I'm just adding a little layer on the inside to stop that from happening. And then on my bag I'm using a letter stencil to mark out the words drink me. <laughs> I thought about maybe using the terrazzo pattern again, but I kind of like the idea that you have a bag that says drink me on it. It's to the point. <laughs> so I had this litter stencil already, just wanted to use it. Again, I'm using a fabric paint and I went with a beautiful dark purple. Now, of course, again, you can do whatever you like on this bag, but to create the cool technique that I went with, I took a fork, I dipped it into the paint and I'm just running the fork prongs along the bag to kind of give it a cool little look. I don't know, I thought it looked cool. I wanted to try something different, something beyond the stencil and go a little bit more abstract. So again, you can have fun, you could tape off sections, you could just use the stencil. Once again, creativity is all yours. And then of course, you just wanna let your bag dry. And as a last little thing to make this gift keep on giving, I'm actually adding a nice tall candle into that wine bag with the wine bottle so that when your friend is done drinking the gifted bottle of wine, you can add the candle to the bottle of wine and now it is a beautiful candle top. And as you can see, I also made a second one with a red bottle of wine. I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like on a green bottle. I went with a cactus pattern and a matching cactus bag and a cute pink candle on top. I think this makes a perfect party gift. I know it's the holidays and you're probably going to a bunch of holiday parties. So this is a really great personalized gift to give the hostess as a thank you. And there you have it folks, three beautiful DIY gifts you can give your loved ones for any special occasions. In terms of DIY difficulties, I would give all three of these DIYs a 0.5 out of five stars. They are so simple and creativity is at your liberty. Just have fun. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope one of these ideas inspired you, whether it's for this holiday season or for any occasion moving forward. Stay merry and have a safe, happy holidays, guys. Bye-bye.